welcome back to Becky's allotment. It's the 18th today, I think. And um, I'm having one of those days. Do you ever get it? Where you go over to the allotment, and you look round, and you haven't got that much left to do. But you just don't want to do it. I, I just don't want to do anything today. I've come over here, walked all the way over here, and I don't know, I'm not feeling it today. But I am going to try and do a little bit. So I'm going to show you around, show you what's been happening since I've last been on, because it's been a while since I've been on the plot. Um, but I have been doing little bits here and there. Uh, it's just been difficult with things going on and um, my mental health, so I haven't been here. But I am back and I'll show you what I've been up to. So this is the plot. I'm starting with coming out of the greener, so I put these strings up, they're going to be a support for the broad beans when they come up. I've done a bit of weeding around these, but these little marigold seeds or calendula seeds that were there and half re-root themselves. And I've hoed these down, I'm going to have to do it again, but as you can see, broad beans coming up nicely there and there's actually three rows so I've done them in zigzags so there's a line there a line there in the middle and I'm hoping either side will hold the middle ones up but I can always put another line in there there's some chard left over from the summer and we had a pile of manure delivered yesterday which we've chucked there and all over the place. So I've got a couple of cabbages down there. I did plant six, but the slugs at most of them. So now I've only got two. And we've got the front here. The apple tree did okay this year. Cherry tree did nothing. And there's some more manure piled up there and round the rhubarb. So there's onions in here, so it was potatoes earlier this year, they did really well. And I dug up the chives and put them in that pot because there was so much cooch grass in here that I just really had to dig everything out. So I put some more chives back in and these are going to go down onto pot two. So literally I just planted the onions so really can't see anything yet and there's some more manure there more manure on the front bed here there's not much left growing in there I've got the peach tree there being overshadowed by the um, what do you call it I remember elderflower so um, I will be moving the elderflower to the space I was going to do it last year but it rained too much that I couldn't dig it out and we've got my artichokes finally this is the globe artichokes and they're finally flowering in October well, that's okay there's still a few bees and stuff around so they might like it so here's the elderflower which is being dug up and moved and we've got the net tunnel I'll quickly show you in here but if anyone oh, just head blow to sunflower anyone has any well advice on how I can get rid of the white fly in here. It's just absolutely crazy. Now I've only got Brussels sprouts left. But the amount of um, white fly that I've got in here. I mean, look at it. It's covering everything in this black white fly stuff, which is just poop. That's what it is. It's white fly poop. <laughs> and there's millions of them. 
So I've got some sprouts growing there, as you can see. They're not very big. I don't want sprouts covered in white boy poop. Anyway, let me know how I can get rid of those. Right, let's go out of here. I'll shut that in a minute. Probably a good idea if something gets in. Right, this is, these buckets are where I was growing the um, potatoes. So I've dug them up and now I've got carrots in there. I don't know how well they're going to do. Put an artichoke there, but I don't know why I did that. Then we've got some cabbage, some leeks, which I planted late, so I didn't seem to get bothered by the leek moth. There's some purple sprout and broccoli there, which doesn't seem to be doing much. And in that bed we've got the um, some more broad beans. We've got some old potatoes which I forgot about there. There's a potato growing in there. I don't know where that came from. Some chard, cabbages. Uh, that's my old polytunnel skin, which I'm giving away to someone. It is broken. Then we've got the asparagus bed. Literally covered this quite liberally in this semi-rotted manure um, it's got mint and stuff here, some beetroot uh, should I show you in the polytunnel quickly so it gets so windy I have to tie this door shut oh. right. let's have a look so we have a bit of, because I've shut all the windows in here now, I've got a bit of white mould going over those slug pellets. Those are some radishes growing and we've got some lettuce seeds, or just um, lettuce leaves, I'm not expecting it to grow a whole lettuce. And we've got some storage in here because I've run out of room in the shed. God, I wish I'd be, I bought a bigger shed. Uh, there's the peach tree and the avocado. And literally just waiting for some kale and lettuce to come up. This side is, I think it's more lettuce up there and I think it's spring onions and radish here. And I was going to put some peas by here, but I haven't done it yet. Anyway, let's have a look out here. I'll shut that door in a minute. In here we've got my celeriac, which is doing okay, and some strawberries. That's about it for here. There's some strawberry plants and stuff in there. And that's the garlic chives which I need to sort out and get all the cooch grass out. So I've done that for the potted bit and that's the bit I just dug out the ground so that needs to be checked for cooch grass because I don't want to be reburying that. In here we've got some parsnips. Now I wanted to get some more of these um, pallet collars but I don't seem to be able to get any anywhere at the moment. And because it's locked down, well, you can't go anywhere either. So I have moved my lemon tree finally into here. So it's been outside all summer and it's made it flower again. So all the flowers have come out at the same time this time. Whereas earlier this year when it flowered, it would be one, then it would fall off, then it would be another one. So I never had a chance to pollinate. I've been hand pollinating these and leaving the door open so insects can come in. Um, up here we've got, I think that's a, what do you call it, aubergine. Um, that's going to die. Uh, that's my basket of fire pepper plant which was literally the size of this greenhouse. 
at the back. So I've um, cut that back. I'm going to take it home today and try and keep it alive in the house. I have got a grow light, so hopefully it'll be okay. And I've got my rhubarb I started from seed. I almost lost these a couple of times because they dried out in the greenhouse but in the summer, but they seem to be okay. We really do need to go outside now. Um, then I've got rosemary. Those were the moose seeds. I didn't have much. I had all these tester seeds sent to me from the lovely people at Moose Seeds, but unfortunately, due to COVID, I didn't plant most of them, only some of them. And then the ones I did plant, which were experimental, I didn't really plant out because I didn't have chance. Anyway, hopefully I'll be able to do a better testing for them next year. So if anyone from Moose Seeds is watching, I'm really sorry and I will do better next year. And then we've got the one Trillian guava left. I really need to pop that outside, but I'm scared someone's going to take it. So I'm going to take some cuttings and see how we do with that. But otherwise, I've got everything set up and ready for the um, spring. So I don't know what... Oh, those pots were... They were full of cabbages, but I planted them outside. And now I think tomatoes fell in them because they were stored on the floor. And uh, they seem to be growing tomatoes now. And we have my last tomato down here, which still had green tomatoes on and showed no signs of blight, even though it's not a blight resistant one. And that is the Mascatoa, which is a tomato which will grow even in bad weather. And they're still producing red tomatoes, so there's still some green ones on there. So I'm going to see how bad the weather has to be for it to still produce. But we shall see. I don't think it's going to make any more tomatoes. There's no more flowers on it. But we'll see how long it lives. I might even take it home and grow it in the house. We shall see. But everything's ready, set up. I've got some more garlic to go out. Because I, the onions and garlic are at the front bed. Here's my lemon tree food. And these actimels. Which I'm using as cane toppers. Anyway, oh, and this is the um, what do you call it? Uh, Kate Gooseberry. And um, yeah, I actually ripped it out last year and not planning to grow it. And uh, the seeds landed on the floor, and it grew itself. And I've had to rip half of these out. There's my aubergine, this is the last one, I'll probably take that home today because I think it's going to be far too cold for it now. My manure again, so then we have what was the salad bed in the summer, this is now full of onions, got some new blueberries, three at the back of pink, three at the front of blue. And we got some onions. It looks like some of these have started. Don't know why, because this bed was really bad in the summer, but as you can see the onions seem to be coming through there. Either that or these spring onions, which I did plant earlier this year, are coming through now. So then we've got some strawberry runners here. There is onions in between these leeks. Now I did get leek moth so um, what I did was cut them down to the ground and um, this is how far they've grown back some of them are doing well like this one some of them not so great like that one maybe they'll just take a bit longer I don't know but they seem to be coming some of them are really healthy see and um, we've got some more garlic I think is in these ones yeah I planted garlic in there there's the three carrots that I managed to grow since spring and they are literally that big so I'm just going to leave them and see what they do my compost pile comfrey bin mess this is just an absolute mess 
That's some chicken manure, which I got given to me. So this all needs to be sorted, but it's only this little corner behind the shed, really. All the rest of it seems to be okay. Now I need to move this fig. Unfortunately, it started to grow some figs. But, uh, yeah, not going to be able to do anything with them. They'll probably fall off like they did last year. This did have another branch on it here, but someone thought it stuck out too much. These two, even though that one's growing up, so they snapped it off and the fig has suffered because of it. But some people are just like that. And we've got the um, wonderberry. No, these aren't the wonderberries, they were in the greenhouse. These are the huckleberries, the garden huckleberries. Not the wild ones that you get in America, these are the garden ones, slightly different, and um, they're quite nice actually, you've got to cook them first. And um, these were literally mental, but I have cut them back a lot, every time I pick them I cut them back. Still some borage going there, that literally was humongous, and my bleeding hearts are in there somewhere, they'll come back in the spring. So then we have the ochre, that is, this needs a weed, but meh, it's not that much. This has all been weeded, and um, we got the cream and the red ochre, and that's plot one. Let's go and have a look at plot two. So this is plot two, if you remember, this is a grapevine arch, it's still going. Uh, the grapevine I hacked back a lot because it was literally wild, and I mean wild. Uh, that grapevine there was doing really well, and then it just seemed to die way before the other ones went. So I don't know whether it's actually dead dead, or just had a heart attack sort of thing and it'll come back. I don't know. I don't know what happened to it. But we shall see in the spring, see if it starts to come back. Otherwise, I have another one. And this is the other grapevine, growing this side. Uh, blueberries, they're doing all right. They seem to disappear before we could eat them this year, so we'll have to cover them next year. Assume it's birds, might not be, could be, don't know. Then we've got my compost bin and the arch. Now that's the arch that was on plot one that kept falling down. So we have painted it, we are fixing it, and it will go back up in the spring. Now this is my new compost bin. I used um, Tony from Simplified Gardening's advice and made this compost bin. It is really easy and I am going to put a link to his video because he literally explains it so much better than I do. So. Thank you, Tony. This bin is amazing. I painted it grey to match my shed. As you can see, the shed's up there. It matches. I might put some white bits on it, I don't know. I have started filling it. We made the door out of some cheap... Oh, it's hard to do one-handed. So, there's the door. Out of some old fence feather edge stuff and these are old bed um what do you call them slats the wooden slats in a bed my neighbor was getting rid of some old frames so he gave me those and i've literally nailed them on but it works really well as a door so there's two separate slidey bits you can see these slide now i'm not going to take that out because there be compost in there. Well, manure. There were so many worms in it, I thought it'd be ideal to start in the compost in this bin. So, yeah, I'm really happy with how this build turned out. And it looks really... Oh, no, I can't do it. One-handed. I'll come back and close everything up after. But it looks really professional. And me and Dad are not 
brilliant at making things look pretty. But this, Tony, this is really easy and we, even we can do it. So, I'm very pleased. Thank you. I will show you the back of it in a minute. And that's the back of the compost bin. It's huge. And these are all my fruit trees and bushes and the strawberries so i've got some almost blackberries going in there and to be honest i'm just gonna let them grow and see what happens i can always give them away to people and they always want them so yes now i want to show you the pear tree because this is doing something very strange it is growing pears. Now apparently I had to google it because I had no idea what my pear tree thought it was spring. But apparently it is because of the daylight hours and the temperature. So apparently it was just the perfect daylight hours and temperature where it thought it was spring and decided to flower again. It was the only fruit tree that did it so I don't know why but it literally produced little pears, bless it. And they're probably going to fall off and die, but at least I know it's still working because the move upset them this year and they didn't produce any fruit. That is only the fruit trees. The bushes did brilliantly. The birds really enjoyed most of those berries. Although the gooseberries I did have. And I did have some of the other berries, but not the red ones. They literally stripped them. So, this is where the other elderflower is going to go, where that is. And um, you'll be wondering where plot three is. Well, plot three is still there. Mm -hmm. It is, but it's not mine. So, I'll give you a quick shot of what's happened to plot three, but I have given it up. But why, why have I given up plot three? Well, I found a different one and I uh, didn't want plot three anymore. So, as it was the one that wasn't finished and we'd only done half of it, where's the one that went? I mean, literally, I've done all the other ones. Why would I get rid of the ones that are done? So let me show you plot three, what the new person has done. Look at that. Beautiful. They've done a really good job. So that's not mine anymore. Not mine. What is mine? Well, nothing yet. <laughs> but I am sharing with someone and helping them out. And I will take over their plot when they're done. And it will be the one next to this one. But there will be nothing on it. Because, um... The current owner is taking things with them, so there'd be no greenhouse or shed, but that doesn't matter because I can put things on there and I've been looking around at greenhouses and hopefully something will come up. I did see one for £150, but it was a bit too big, too big. We're allowed them that big on this site, so there'll be others. There always is, and this is the time of year to keep an eye out for them, so... That is exactly what I'll be doing. But anyway, if you liked this uh, little update, please hit the like button. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Most of my uh, watchers seem to be, well, it's 80%, 80% aren't subscribers. So if you don't subscribe and you are watching and you do like what you watch, please consider subscribing because it really helps build the channel and I know that you like what you see. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep changing things up and then I will know what you like and what you don't. Although, hopefully I like my new hair. <laughs> well, it's not new. I keep dyeing it lots of different colours at the moment. Well, it's growing out. So I might have to bleach it again. Ah, Anyway, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.